Just a few words about Georgia. A few words about the world, actually. We are in Davos. It's 2012. It's a difficult year. We had a very difficult year. It's going to be most likely even more difficult 2012. Europe is not doing well. United States growth is less than expected. China's growth is less than expected. Uh, nobody knows what's going to be and how it's going to develop for next 12 months. And this is the best time to invest in Georgia. <laughs> and these are the honest words that I'm saying, by the way. Um, why? Uh, we had the growth of 6.8% last year. We had growth of 6.7% the year before that. We are forecasting growth of minimum 5 to 6% this year. By the way, I always have at least 1% up in my sleeve, just in case. You never know. So officially, we put in budget 5.5% growth rate this year, hoping for more. Uh, when the whole world got downgraded their GDP forecast last year, we were the only country who upgraded ours from 5 to 6.5. Um, when the whole world actually got downgraded by Standard Poor's and Fitch last year and this year, we were the only country, I think, with other four countries, if I'm not mistaken, in the last quarter of previous year that got upgraded by Standard Poor's and Fitch. And I think, according to all the macro parameters, we are the one of the most sound countries in the world right now. And by macro parameters, I mean GDP growth. I mean inflation. It was 2% last year. I mean debt to GDP. Our foreign debt to GDP is 32% and going down. Our total debt to GDP is 41% and going down. I mean budget deficit. It's 3.5%. And by the way, we managed to decrease the budget deficit from 9.2% in 2009 down to 3.5% in 2011. Within two years' time, it's a very short period of time to decrease this, and we managed it. Um, our current account balance is 9%. It's a bit high, but it's going down from 20% that was in 2007. Our banking sector is healthy and wealthy. We didn't have one bank who came for bailout. We didn't have one bank who got bankrupt during this period of time. Our uh, deposits are record high. Our uh, loan book is record high. Uh, that's because our banking regulation is quite strict. We had, for example, capital adequacy ratio requirement of 20%, which is, I think, highest one of the highest in the region, definitely. By the way, Lehman Brothers had 5% back when they broke down. Um, so the situation is, is that the macro parameters are there, and you can you all can look it up and uh, yourself. According to IMF, we are one of the healthiest countries, uh, and it's it's continuing. And it's not uh, one-year results. These are the results of the past few years, and these results are going uh, going forward as well. On top of that, which is very very important as well, we have become a hub of a region. By hub of a region, I mean we have become hub of the region in terms of energy. We are net electricity exporters. 88% or 90% of our electricity comes from hydro. We have utilized only 18% of our hydro resources. So there is huge uh, volumes to be utilized in hydro resources in Georgia. And by the way, all the, our neighboring countries have huge demand for that. And there's a huge demand growth in, in, the, in the whole region. Well, nuclear disaster in Japan was, of course, a bad President, but it actually changed geopolitics of energy in our region, definitely. And many countries stopped their nuclear programs. Right now, one of the major drivers for next 10 years is viewed to be Georgian hydro resources. And we are seeing, actually, a huge number of companies coming to Georgia, building hydropower plants in Georgia, and exporting to Turkey, to Bulgaria, Serbia, uh, to other, other countries in the region. By the way, today we'll be signing also another um, agreement between Georgia Ministry of Energy and uh, investment investment company who will be also researching 10 or 15 new hydropower plants to be built in Georgia. We transit 1.6% of total oil consumption of the world through Georgia. Uh, we buy zero gas from Gazprom. We allow Gazprom to take gas through Georgia to Armenia. We have very well diversified gas. We have one of the cheapest gas in the region. We have one of the cheapest electricity in the region. So that also gives us quite good leverage. Uh, in terms of geopolitics, geographically, we are gateway to many landlocked countries. We are gateway to Armenia, Azerbaijan, to Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, to all those Central Asian countries. 
Uh, for some of them, we are the only way to the rest of the world. For some of them, we are one of the best ways to the rest of the world. For others, we are just one of the alternative routes. Uh, our ports are the busiest ports in the region. Uh, the growth is there. You can see transportation figures yourself. Our railway at ports are quite busy. We have managed to do very good in, in, in investments in infrastructure. Our highways, railways, roads, airports, ports, mainly private held, privately held. By the way, we privatized. We have open and, and, and liberal economy. Our trade is very diversified. And uh, after being a hub, actually, we are also investment hub in the region, and that comes with few reforms that we did in the past seven years. And by the reforms, I mean actually fighting corruption. And that's, I think, the single biggest and most important result that we had in the past seven years. Let me just give you a very brief story. Back in 2003, people in Georgia came out in the streets just like they came out in Egypt, but without violence, by the way, just like they came out in Russia, just like they came out in other countries. But it, it happened in 2003. The demand was only one, get rid of corruption. And this is this only demand, by the way, which, is dri which drives population against their governments, uh, what I see. And back then, Mikhail Saakashvili became president in 2004, and he was given a huge mandate by population. He was told by population to get rid of corruption, do whatever you want. And that was number one of our agenda. And when we thought back then in 2004 what economic policy of Georgia could possibly be, we thought of only one thing. We are, we are not very rich with oil or very rich with gas, but we have very good geographical position, and we could have become investment hub of the region by actually doing few things, by fighting corruption, by decreasing bureaucracy, by decreasing taxes, by simplifying bureaucracy, by bringing state to be a small state, and giving environment to private sector. And that the, all the reforms in Georgia in the past eight years were done only from that point of view. We are done from the point of view of private sector. We looked at every single legislation, every single rule, every th single regulation from private sector's point of view, and we got rid of most of them. By the way, fighting corruption was, was one of the most difficult jobs. I can give you just one very ex easy example. In April 2004, we fired every single traffic policeman in Georgia, all 18,000 of them. And by the way, traffic was much better without them. <laughs> I'm serious. Come to London. <laughs> Fire them. So uh, you, cannot, you cannot do that in a country when you don't have huge population support. You cannot do that when you don't have huge mandate from population. And we did that. And we did very, very painful reforms in this part in these years. And by the way, uh, the support of government and support of president went down. Of course it would have gone. When you fire 18,000 people, you actually fire 18,000 people with their families. Of course. It's, it wasn't easy. It was difficult. But when afterwards population saw the results of those reforms, now the support is back up. Now Saakashvili's ratings are back in the high 70s, 78 or 79, same with government and same with um, a leading political party. So these reforms have actually played very well for Georgia. Right now, according to Transparency International, we are one of the least corrupt countries in the world. By the way, there was a uh, um, uh, survey. One the same question was asked to population of society of I don't know, 83 countries. The question was, have you or member of your family paid bribe in past 12 months? Uh, EU average, by the way, was 4%. Uh, United States was 4%. Georgia was 3%. Only 3% of Georgians paid bribe. Or member, it's high, by the way. We're going to fight that. We're going to decrease that. The only countries that did better than us were Great Britain, uh, South Korea, Singapore, I think Canada, uh, and Nordic countries. That we're, we are in good, good, good uh, kind of, yes, we're in good company there. That's according to Transparency International. So you can judge it, judge it yourself. From one of the most corrupt countries in 2003, we have become one of the least corrupt countries in the world. According to Easy to Do Business Report, which is a report done by World Bank, and actually this report kind of summarizes everything, how easy to fire people, hire people, labor code, uh, mm, crossing borders, customs clearance, paying taxes, and so on, and so on. According to that, we were 112th in 2005. We are 16th this year. We are hoping to become top 10 in 2012. We are the only developing country in top 20. 
we are the only country who broke into top 20 ever since this report exists. Number one is Singapore, two is Hong Kong, Great Britain, United States, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, so on, so on, and, and Georgia, 16. By the way, Germany is behind us. Just a couple of steps. Switzerland is 26. Oh, sorry. Switzerland is 26, apparently. There is Forbes makes so-called, I, I love that, by the way, tax misery index. Uh, in which country taxation is most painful. I will not say, I will say afterwards, by the way, not officially, but I will not say which is the most miserable country according to Forbes tax misery index, but Georgia is fourth least tax miserable country in the world. Uh, number first, second, and third being the countries which you don't have taxation, by the way. It's United Arab, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and, and one of them who have huge oil income. Uh, we had 21 different types of taxes. Right now we have only six. All of them are flat, all of them are low. And it's very easy to understand by everybody. Uh, we have become geopolitical center of the region and we, are st we have started free trade agreement negotiations with Euro European Union. It started last year. It's gonna, I don't know, it's gonna continue 12, 18 months, but that will make Georgia another step forward in terms of becoming hub of the region. Very simply, India, China, e Asian countries, Central Asian countries, do have some problems of trading with European Union. Same with Turkey with and Central Asia and Central Asian countries. And Georgia is becoming the hub which will put together, it's a small country, but which will put together Asian and European businesses and which will make it easier to trade between Asia and European Union. We are hoping to start free trade negotiations with United, United States as well within the nearest future, which also gives, will give us additional leverage. So that's where we are. We have done our reforms. Uh, investments are coming to Georgia. Despite investments shrinking all around the world, all around that part of the world, we are seeing more and more investments coming to Georgia. Uh, we are seeing more and more companies being happy, being making money and making profits in Georgia. We, we love that. Our main goal is fighting unemployment. And that's our main goal. And the, what I told you is that this is how we saw the way to fight unemployment, to fighting corruption, to make it easy for business private sector to flourish in Georgia, to make it environment which is good in Georgia, and so on and so on. Um, what are the main industries that develop that are developed in Georgia, which this is how I would, I would put it. If I was I had money, I was rich, and if I was businessman, I would invest in Georgia, where would I invest in Georgia? And if I wasn't prime minister. Uh, there are a few industries that I would, I would invest in. That's one is definitely hydropower plants, uh, which are quite good, I think, profit-making machines right now. And there are more than 10 new hydropower plants being built in Georgia now. In this year, in last year of worldwide crisis, in Georgia there are 10 new hydropower plants that started construction. Another 10 will start construction this year. We are talking in total of investments of $3.5 billion in hydropower plants only, which will be invested in Georgian economy within the next five, six years. That's one. Second is uh, definitely tourism. Uh, Georgia is a very strange country. It's, it's, uh, it's a mixture of Asia and Europe. Uh, we have been conquered by many nations in the Middle Ages, and we have been kind of inherited culture and cuisine of many different countries. It's kind of Asia-European cuisine, also our original. So it's, we have also high mountains, ski resorts, as well as seaside, uh, quite um, um, cosmopolitan nation, very friendly, very hospitable, hospitable. Number of tourists are increasing every year by 40%, 4-0. And this is last three years figures. It's, it's continuing, it's quite high uh, growth rate. And uh, Definitely, tourism sector is something that we is flourishing a lot, and most likely will be will will see the growth of tourism sector even more in in the future. Agriculture, very much underdeveloped, underdeveloped, but that's why any know-how brought from outside, from Israel or from Europe or from United States, and brought to Georgia, will give a huge profit margins. Definitely, and agriculture is something that will definitely have huge uh, growth in in the future. Uh, logistics. I already told you all about it, and definitely logistical centers will develop in Georgia, and it's already developing, by the way. Transportation, uh, banking sector is quite good, actually, quite profitable in Georgia. 
quite diverse banking sector, and we are seeing more and more banks uh, establishing their business in Georgia. We have um, HSBC, Societe Generale, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan banks, Kazakh banks, Ukrainian banks, Russian bank, VTB also is quite active in Georgia, so it's quite diverse. But there is still huge room to grow. So this is quite diverse economy. It doesn't depend on one single trade partner. Our trade, major trading partner is European Union with 24%. Um, next one is Turkey. Uh, our, we don't depend on one single country in terms of FDI. Our biggest FDI provider is United Arab Emirates with 10%. Next one is Turkey, UK, Czech Republic, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, quite diverse as well. Uh, we don't depend on one single commodity for export. We don't depend on one single commodity to import. Uh, so trade is diverse, FDI is di diverse, uh, every sector is diverse. And uh, we are seeing quite good investments to be continued in our country. So I don't have imagination that after my speech you will say that, oh, great country, we're going to go, go to Georgia, invest in Georgia million do millions of dollars. No. The main goal is to, for you to look up in Google, Georgia, what are we about, and to visit Georgia only once. If you do that, you will fall in love with that country, and believe me, you're going to continue to be a tourist in Georgia, or you're going to be become a major investment in Georgia, investor in Georgia. So thank you very much for being here one more time, and I hope to see you and welcome you in Georgia. Thank you.